All right, so we took a look at creating some just basic shader stuff. Um, let's take a look at some more no like helpful nodes. Um, and also we, we talked a little bit about alpha, but we didn't bring up this alpha clip threshold. What this is is this is sort of a way to create a mask. And if you're familiar with masks from Photoshop, it's a way of like blocking out certain sections. So for instance, here we have their simple nose here, no noise here rather. And if I increase the value here, let me just go ahead and delete this. Oops. And so we could just kind of see it happening in real time. If I increase this value here, you can see it makes it bigger or smaller. Now what we can do is we can clamp this or step it, which means make the a harder edge around the white and black. So say we want more of a cutout effect. Like for instance, if we just drag this and drop this in here and I play with the alpha value here. Actually, let me save this. And then, actually, we can probably see it here. I play with this alpha value here. You can see how it dissolves, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control S. So now we're actually using this. But let's say we want it to be not so, we want much a much harder edge there, right? What I can do is I can use something called a step node. And I can grab my out here, and I can just plug it in to the integer value here. You could see it has an edge value. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to drop that into my clip. Now, depending on the value that I put in here, you can see it gives it a much harder edge. Do you see that? It's a, it takes this uh, white and gray and it turns it to white and black because we get a value of 0 to 1. So how do I know that, that that's what's happening? Well, if you select the node and you're not sure what it is, you can always go to Open Documentation or you can press F1 on the node itself. And that'll actually open up the documentation inside of Unity. And you can see it says here, step node returns a value of 1 and to the value of the input edge, otherwise returns 0. Now, the input edge is, if you recall, we plugged our, um, our out into this IN or input edge. All right, so here we have... Um, the simple noise is actually being controlled by UVs. That means the way this ball or this sphere is unwrapped. Now, there might be instances where when you want to move the sphere, you want it to be moved with the, the essentially like do some sort of effect where like it moves across the surface or you want it to be according to the world and you don't actually have UV maps that are correct on your model. So a lot of cartoony games will actually just create a color swatch or color palette and they'll crunch their UVs down and they'll put the color inside that area. Um, so for instance, things like, um, so say for this sphere, um, well here, I'll just do it really quick in Pro Builder. If I make a new shape here, and it's a sphere, and let's go ahead and uh, apply, close this for a second, apply the this new shader that we created to this guy. You can see it, it looks essentially the same. But what's happening here is it's actually working in tangent with the, if we go to our UV editor, you can see our UVs are actually unwrapped here. So if I go in and I grab these verts here, let's see if I have to convert it. Yeah, and I scale it down. Notice that these, let me see if I can do this. All of this moved as well, right? Because it's based on the scale just kind of like, um, let me actually just let's see if I can. Save that off so it's a little bigger and easier to see. Uh, let's see. I might have to convert this to. Let's see, convert to manual. There we go. So as I scale these down, you'll see we almost completely lose our effect. Do you see that? Because it's this, uh, this here is set to UVs. And like I said, in certain games, you might not even unwrap things so that they're completely unwrapped that way. So how do we fix that? Well, there's a position node here. And if we link this into the second UV slot here, you can see that it reset it so that if we look at it from before, you can see we're actually going to be using the world itself, which is the way things look, to control the look of this. 
So let me uncheck this for a second, and then I'm going to hit save. You can see now we have it back to where it is because we're using the coordinates of the world. If we go to view, and actually if I click on this, I want to show you something else. Uh, let me close Pro Builder too so we don't have that outline. If I move this, also using, you get a pretty cool effect when you use the world, where as you're moving this around, the this is always, this uh, this being the sphere is always, it's, it's positioning of this is always based on the world. We'll say you're like, well, I don't want that. I want it to be fixed. Like I want it to be a globe or something. You can do things like you can go to object and save that. And that'll take into account the object's position. See, we don't have that anymore. You can also do the view, which is the camera that we're looking through. So if I save that, you can see as I look around, it's it's just based on the camera. So it moves, it kind of gives you a cool effect like that. So just being aware that you can adjust the positioning of certain elements. Something else I failed to note, uh, comment on is, uh, let me kind of close a lot of this stuff out so you get more room. You, you might be like, well, what the heck is this thing that you're plugging all these values in? Like, I understand that this is the color. And I understand that this has to do with the glowiness of a texture. And this has to do with transparency. The top is the vertex part of the shader and the bottom is the fragment. You could think of the vertex as the vertices on the model. So like we can do, and maybe we will create water, but if we bring Pro Builder back, we can actually adjust or affect the way these vertices move through texture. Like we can have it like move up and down or scale or whatever. And that's all through this vertex. Fragment has to do with color. So that's why we're plugging everything in here, like our little material nodes, and it's affecting the color of our model. So for instance, like let's bring our blackboard back. I can actually go in here and I can create a texture 2D, which is an image node. And in order to put it inside this base color, we want to sample that. So we're going to do texture and then um, let's see, texture sample, sample texture 2D. So we plug this into this texture slot here, and now we have a public variable. Uh, let me shrink this for a second. I plug this into the base color here. Now when I save this, and I'm going to actually delete this for a second. Um, oh, let's make sure alpha is set to 1, 2. Uh, you'll see because I broke, I messed up the UVs on this one. It's not going to be as prevalent. But if I go in here and I look at the shader, I now have a slot for a texture 2D. And you can rename these and it'll update in the scene. So this could be like main texture. You could see it updated to main texture. Now we could select an image and apply it to our model like that. So this would be a lot better if we, if I had actually unwrapped it. But like, see how this one looks clean? And this is all screwed up because of the UVs. And I'll just, just to beat a dead horse, like uh, I'm just going to go in here to UV Editor and select the faces of this model. You can see we shrunk it down. But as I scale this up, you can see the UVs directly correspond with this mesh here. Let me center pivot on this as well. So, so now you can see we actually have a little bit of a cleaner UV. I have a whole modeling and texturing course that I go through characters and all this other stuff where we do more uh, advanced modeling and UVing, but for now it's an introductory course. This is pretty good for now. So I think this is a good overview. The best way to sort of get into this is um, if we start making things that you would actually use for your game. So let me turn the particle system back on. And it looks like I lost all of those through turning the program on and off. But it's a good thing because we actually have, we go to particles here. We actually have a uh, snow particle system that we created before that has like really nice attributes. See how it's like sticking to the floor. What I think might be cool is if we create a shader where we can control uh, snow appearing on the surface of the model. And so we'll do that in the next videos. We'll create a snow shader.